This is a continuation of the RHCSA video series. This, this one will, uh, this video will be on using input-output re redirection. So this is uh, on the command line. When you run a particular command script or program, you may want to redirect the certain bits of output um, elsewhere. So input output uh, in the Linux environment are distributed across three different streams. The streams are standard input or STD in, or standard output STD out, and standard error STD error. They're also numbered, so standard in is zero, standard out is one, and standard error is two. So during the normal interaction between the the, you know, yourself and terminal, uh, the standard input is transmitted via your keyboard. But you can also use scripts to input the standard input, perhaps. Maybe it's uh, going through a file and picking up all the information line by line, and that's going into the script, for example. That's what be standard input. Then you've also got standard output, so when, as and when the, the, the script's running it may be pushing stuff out via something like an echo command which is then giving you output or it could be an output into a, a log file for instance. And the final, the other example is the standard error, so if there's an error in this running the program or script or whatever it can print it to the standard error, so that's two. So just a couple examples of all these uh, different types of um, inputs etc. So let's do a standard input in. So let's do type the word cat, which is the concatenate program. So it brings um, generally what it's used for is multiple files um, to join together or concatenate. But most people just use to print um, a file uh, out. So we can just do an example of this. So standard input one, two, three. You can see. As I input it, it's directly being outputted by cat. So that's standard in, in and standard out is coming out. Press Control D to do the end. End that there. Right, standard output. How can we show this? You can do echo, which is literally the almost the standard output command. Uh, so it will just uh, whatever we put in here uh, will be printed to your screen. So. Echo is very useful for perhaps in a script, maybe you want to have a, you can use it for prompts, so to ask questions, etc. Or you could use it just saying, no, no, I've, I've reached this particular area of the script or for something like that. So I, I use it quite regularly. So we can do, a, let's just say, a standard output. Oops. There we go, standard output. Excellent. If we run it without any, anything, get an empty line. Yep, exactly. Cool. Standard error. So let's just so yeah, a very simple example I can think of right now. So if we do an ls and we do it against the percent sign, you can see that's the error there. Standard error. Ls command cannot access uh, percent sign. No such file or directory. So very simple. You can also redirect these streams. So you may want to use those streams for output into a, a log file or a, a, another script as an input or something like that. So there's, uh, there are lots of options around the redirection. You may have seen this before. So there's, this is the greater than or uh, greater than sign, which will do the standard output, standard input, and then Oops, standard error. These three different ones. If you specify just one, so for example, this again, so this is a standard output, this will do overwrite whatever's existing. So, maps, is a f you're writing to a file, for example, this will overwrite whatever's in that file already. So, if you want to run that script multiple times and keep a continuous log, you don't want to do this. <laughs> However, if you want to clean log every time, you're going you're gonna to run this. To append, you just double that. So standard output, standard input, standard error. See? Simple as. So let's do another example. Let's 
do a clear. So let's do let's do standard output, which is redirect to a file. Test, <laughs> very unique name, test.txt. Okay. So cat's now waiting for input. So let's put standard input. So I don't know. Let's do a, b, c, one, two, three. And you can see we're getting. You can see that before when we run cat, without any uh, file name etc, we were getting the standard output directly into this line here. Uh, so if we put a, we've got an a again. We've got b, we've got b again, etc. However, because we're not we're not getting anything right now, it's because we're redirecting the output directly into that test file. So if we can do Control D, and now we can run cat again, but we just do it for that file. And we can see it's been successfully redirected into that file. If we do exactly the same thing again, okay, let's just do one, two, three this time. One, two, three. Control D again. Again, cat the file. What, we, what should we see? Just the one, two, three. Because we have only specified the single. So we're, we're actually going to, it's the, uh, Overwrite rather than the append. So if we do, so we've got one, two, three. So we want let's do A, B, C. So we do cat again, double test.txt. Do it again, and let's do A, B, oops, B, C, and the control D again. Now if we do cat again, we have. The entire there, so it's appended now. Let's do a clear. So that covers the redirection. So you've also got an option to pipe. So that's actually uh, used to redirect a stream from one program to another. So a program's uh, standard output can be sent through the pipe, it's called, which is this symbol. So this is an example of a pipe. So it's this symbol here, okay, the pipe. So what we can do, for just a very quick example, ls, one is lhtr, okay, got this output, okay, we'll run it again, okay, then pipe it to less. Less command is, uh, it's like a simple text manager command, a uh, program. So if we run that, it will allow us to um, view it and actually uh, I'll just show you how it works so it's got like a, a scroll option so if you've got a large output for example of the ls command this can be quite good because you can scroll up and down inside it and view things um, without having just a static output so it can be good if you've got a large output of course so finally this after using pipes you can actually use pipes to filter um, so there's actually a load of um, built-in programs you can use to filter stuff. You can do like a, uh, a find command which allows you to return files with file names that match an argument that's passed to find. You've got stuff like grep which is the uh, you'll actually pattern match so it'll be uh, using regex or regular, regular expression. You've got the T command, which can redirect the standard input to both standard output and to one or more files. So that, so if you want the um, output to be be able to be viewed immediately, but also write to a log, you can do the, use the T command. That's quite a good one for perhaps SSH login, for example. You might SSH and have the T command pushing out the output, but also writing it straight to a log as well, for example. The TR or translate that finds and replaces one string with another. WC uh, counts the characters, lines and words. So let's just do a quick, uh, just show you the quickly the, uh, for example, a couple of those. Um, find, um, I can just do what the name calls Do a ls again. Make sure. I've, let's just try and match against. Let's say anything with. We've got 
got so multiple matches against perhaps just do dot bash like that yep so you should get quite a few of those and let's just do dot bash copy and then paste okay find it should ah see you need to use the wild, I need to use the wildcards correctly so none of them actually are just dot bash so I need to do like that there we go so so I'm doing LS with the LHTRA which I talked about in previous videos then piping it into a find to find the name of anything at the start essentially which means one or more matches of anything basically uh, the dot, which is the literally the dot, um, notation means a hidden file, and then bash, and then any again, any match, zero or more matches, bash. And then we've got the four outputs there. Excellent. So we can do a very similar thing here, um, perhaps a grep. So we can do a grep, and then just do. I like the output of grep generally better for, for this sort of thing. I find find is better for searching entire direct large directories etc. You may want to uh, dive in very deep, uh, whereas like an ls command, I know to do that. So you want to normally find is used at the uh, base command, rather like a, like this rather than in a pipe. I haven't really seen it very used very often, but it's an example anyway. Uh, you can see the output's a bit better at this year, so we've got a bit more information about the files, etc. A T, you may want to do like a, let's say we do the cat that cat example again, just to clear, so let's do the uh, cat, and then we do a pipe, and then we do T, and then we do test2.txt looks very same. If we do A, we get the, the output. B, C, D, control D. Okay, now if we have a look in this test 2, what do we have? We have the same output. So it allows us to have the output and the input as well, which is quite useful. Uh, there's a TR command, this is the translate command. We don't use that that often. So we can do cat test two and then tr to so translate a a. Can you see it's just translate any entries of the lowercase a to the uppercase a, for example. You can obviously you can do a hell of a lot more than that, but that's just a very very quick example of using a pipe and uh, an additional command there. Um, what else have we got here? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so that's how many letters. I think it's how many words for. There we go. Yep, so that's just. That will give us the letters and the words. Uh, WC, again. All of these. As previous, there's just examples of good commands you can use <coughs> as a filter um, for your. So when you add in the, the redirection, so that's quite a nice way to redirect files. I regularly I use perhaps a um, a command called tail. So you may have like a. Let's have a look at. So we've got any logs. Let's do audit. No logs in there. I probably haven't turned all it on. Uh, let's have a look. The message. Okay. So we do tail minus f, which follows the file. Yeah. 
may do a grep for oh, okay. I'll use to sudo for that because it's a it's a oh, it's, okay that was actually open <laughs> it's just didn't have anything in it at the moment so yeah, so this is just a good example anyway. You can grep for errors in files, etc. Um, we could have a look, maybe just the setup.log, for example. Maybe just do a, rather than a tail, we just do a cat. So I can just look for any errors. I have to give this a full directory because I don't think I'll actually see these in there. So there's no errors. Um, Right. <laughs> Let me have a look in there. <laughs> um, let's just do a quick VI. Okay, so we're looking for failure then. <laughs> That'll be a good one. Just <laughs> there we go. We finally got something. So yeah, you can do that for example. But um so that grep is quite nice. So if you do like a tail, like I showed in the very start here, that minus F means follow it. So it'll, it'll, the tail basically reads the bottom of a file. They've got head and tail. So to both head means it reads the top, tail reads the bottom, and minus F means follow. So I use that quite often to, um, so you've got a running log file, maybe you're installing an application or you're just starting the application up or something like that. You do a tail minus F and then push it to the path of the log file and you can either just keep it running as a tail and just let it pump its output out but or you may want to grep on particular messages maybe you're looking for I don't know something started or an error for example like that so that may be uh, a useful one I use that very often and that it's very important to know that the pipe so the pipe is outputting any any of the standard output into that grep and that grep is then searching for anything that matches the error I think that completes the video. Um, if there's any more topics or you would like to me to cover in these videos, uh, please uh, comment below. Uh, but please, please, if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe. Um, hit the like button if you could. That would be awesome. Um, and I hope you to uh, hope you enjoyed my video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks again.